Well, greetings, everybody. Today, we're going to be doing something a little different, and I'm going to be reviewing the Hercules portable bandsaw and the Universal portable bandsaw benchtop stand. Okay, so at the time of making this video, the saw itself cost about $185 at Harbor Freight, and the stand was about $120. So if this thing cuts sheet metal and some light gauge flat steel like I'm wanting it to, this should be a very, very good deal. We'll find out. Okay, so let's see what comes in the box. Hinges, not the greatest, but there she be. Look at how pretty that thing is. Yeah, I'm not going to go on into specifics. I'm sure if you're watching this video, you probably read the website and all that jazz, so I'm not going to waste your time. We're just going to put this thing together and try to cut some motor mounts for that bike. So it looks like these guys just kind of slide off like this to the side, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yes, sir. Well, one sure did. There we go. Okay, that should be it. What do we got going on here? Looks like we got a little bit of a brush to clean off the rubber rollers on the motor side. Cool. Let's grab a blade and get it on here. Ooh, there's two in a package. And we'll see how good these Harbor Freight Hercules Hercules brand blades work over time. I'll probably end up going online and buying something decent, but eh, we'll give these guys a go. Okay. So how do we tighten and loosen this thing? I saw a lever on this side. Yes, sir, we've got tight, loose. Let's try this again. Okay, round the rubber rollers, then through the bearings, and we are set. Okay, I think should be able to put the lever back to the tight side, put our safety cover back on, power this thing up. These directional, yes, sir. A one and a two. Oh, let's plug this guy in. Oh, look at that. There's an LED light on it. How cute is that? Okay, stand back, everybody. Yep, that's a metal bandsaw cutter. Cool. Well, let's go grab the little universal rack and put the sucker on there. Okay, so it looks like we've got a speed adjustment over here. Ooh, that made the lights dim. Well, let's take a look at the box. Oh cool, it's got a little jig so I can cut at 0, 30, 45, and 60 degree angles. It's durable, that's good. Universal design, same thing up there. It's got legendary performance, so I like that. There better be better be bubble wrap in here. It's very disappointing if there isn't. Very nice. 
Well, everything I'm seeing so far is looking pretty good. Fit and finish is very nice on it. Powder coating is nice. Yeah, so I guess the first thing we gotta do... Let's take a look. It's got a little hydraulic ram here. It doesn't look to be adjustable, but what do we got going on here? Ah, spring-loaded. So that probably sits back here, I would assume. Yes sir, Bob. And over here, oh cool, I bet this is how you turn it on. I wonder if you can lock it. Yeah, you should be able to lock this thing in the on position, I bet, if we tighten this screw. We'll find that out later. Well, it looks like some tools, some bracketry, a really heavy plate of some sorts. Cool. Little cutting surface. That is nice size. This can be great. I like this. Things looking good so far, folks. You know, I just realized I didn't cut my boards on the workbench long enough to accommodate this. It's gonna be great if I'm only gonna go like this and let and cut down, but if I want to cut it like this. Oh well, I'll have to go grab some more wood, make the bench about that wide. Let's move over to the saw. First thing we gotta do is we gotta take this handle off. We've got some bracket here that goes on here that will mount to the table. That washer's gone. So I just looked at this bracket here that came on here. Come on, Harbor Freight, make up your mind. Nope, just realized I'm not smart. This is the right bracket. For that guy. The other one's for the bower. Finger tight, I'm sure, for now. That's fine. Okay, first thing, chain off. Let's put this in the upright position. Loosen these guys up. Route our power cable through here. Somehow. Now, let's take a look what we gotta do here. So I'm assuming, yeah, well, these guys will tighten onto back here. The bracket that we put on earlier will bolt here. And that should be about all there is to it. Now, to mount the bandsaw in here. Bracket should slide on the outside like this. Should, there we go. Let's tighten down our little screws on the bottom just to hold it temporarily. And we'll put the couple bolts through here, just finger tight for now. Yeah, I've got one problem right here. The saw itself is hitting on the table, so I should be able to just move these guys to adjust the, table or the saw sideways a little bit. Eventually, this guy should fall right into that channel. Yeah, you'll probably have to play around with this a little bit until it fits, but you'll get there. Okay, you can kind of see on the bracketry here where I have everything adjusted. The whole saw is shifted this way a touch, but when I lay it down, good clearance. And our blade is directly in the middle of this channel. That's how it should be. Now that we have everything centered, should be able to tighten up my bracketry. How about we stand it up? Make it easy on ourselves. Okay, so you can see these holes drilled over here. This is our adjustment for our trigger arm actuator guy. We'll slide this through here and then just kind of find out which hole works when the trigger is actually depressed. And we will choose this one right here. Maybe this one. And we'll try this one. Plug it in and see what happens. Yeah. 
accurate click, so that should work. Should pop right on there. Should pop right on there. Get on there. There, we're fully hydraulic now. Okay, so we saw the horizontal orientation with the base and the jig for your angles down here. But this is the vertical orientation you can set it up as. I'm thinking I might actually do that. I'll throw this plate on here. Maybe I'll take the base off and put that on the shelf for a later date. And I'll just screw this to the bench and use it like this for now. Because generally, most of the stuff when I cut, I am cutting it freehand up here like this. I think this might work better for me for now. Like that. Perfect. Yes, sir. That's going to work for me. I think I'll take all the hardware, put it in a baggie, and put everything back in the box. In case I ever want to go horizontal again. Let's crank the space heater up to full bore and turn this thing on see if we can blow a breaker or not. I'll put a little switch right here so I can turn it on and off like that. Yeah, I like it. Wow, I'm impressed so far. Even with that blade, that's some pretty thick stuff. And I didn't break one tooth off. Maybe the blades are okay even too. So I've got set on about two and a half as far as my speed is concerned. Let's try the really, really, really nasty stuff. Jeez, three eighths inch plate.
Well, folks, you have no idea how excited I am right now. See, look, this is my excited face. So what do y'all think? Is it something that you would buy? I mean, for what I do, I mean, right now I'm kind of working on building some custom motor mounts because I'm putting this TRX 200 SX engine in a 75 Honda XL frame. So I'm doing some custom fabrication work here and there. And I think this thing is going to fit the bill just beautifully. Yeah, I really didn't have to do much adjustment on it after I got it all set up. So yeah, I mean, if you want to check this thing out, it's very affordable. And yeah, I think it's about really all I have to say about it for now. So um, in the meantime, I mean, make sure you like, subscribe, and tell your sister I said hi. And I'll see you next week. All right, I hope you liked this episode of Bigfoot Bikes and Brews. Click on one of the videos here if you want to see some more. And please click on the Bigfoot button to subscribe to the channel and join in on the fun. See you next week.